security. Yeah, it's working now? Working. Great. Excellent. And today we're going to talk about the future. We're going to try to understand how our life are going to look in the next 5, 10, 20 years from today because things are accelerating. Things are happening so much faster. And there's one message I want to forward to you. We don't have short term anymore. Short term is dead. Long term is the new short term. Everything is accelerating so fast. Let me prove that to you. Let's think about the last 10 years. What happened on our planet in the last 10 years? How fast things have accelerated. So we usually talk about the last 10 years, we talk about COVID, we talk about invasion to Ukraine, we talk about US elections, but few other things happen on our planet, which actually means so much more for us as societies. We crack the atom to its most basic fundamental element, the boson Higgs, what scientists are referring to as the God particle. We crack that into its most basic fundamental element and we complete the quantum model. We conquered the solar system this decade. We landed on asteroids. We landed on uh, comets. We have probes all over the solar system. We are back on the moon. We have robots on Mars. This is the decade that we conquer the solar system. We changed our DNA. We have the technology to start designing our DNA, code our DNA, program our DNA, want to be taller, want to be muscular. Just change our DNA with CRISPR-Cas9 technology. More than that, not only we changed our DNA, today we can actually create DNA from scratch. And this was the decade that for the first time, scientists, has, have, oops, sorry, scientists have a, a created DNA from scratch and created life. We took pictures of a black hole. We knew they existed. We knew they were there. We never, ever saw a black hole up until 2019. And if we actually had the subject of stars, we created a star here on our planet in a nuclear fusion experience. We created a capsule that was 10 times hotter than the core of the sun and three times denser than the core of the sun. And it was stable for six minutes. We had a star. We create a star here on our planet for six minutes. We built the most advanced piece of equipment, James Webb Telescope, sent one million miles to space, and in one year, we rewritten all of the astronomy books. And from everything that James Webb discovered, for me, this is the picture that blew my mind the most. It's a galaxy 13.5 billion light years away. Why that was so shocking to me? Because without going to the physics, without going to the explanations, what this picture means is that today we can see 99% of the observable universe and we can go back in time 99% to the Big Bang. 10 years, we conquered the solar system, we created stars, we created life, we changed DNA, everything in just 10 years. And the question we keep asking is why? What's going to happen? What's going on here? It's a function of two things really. It's a function of data. It's a function of computing power. This is what's changing. And we live in a world of data. We live in a world every day. Every day we generate 329 quintillion bytes of data. A quintillion is a million trillion bytes of data. And this number keeps multiplying itself every 18 months. So if we had this discussion back in 2000, global data was multiplying every 15 years. In 2010, every six years. Now global data is multiplying itself every 18 months. But we're generating so much data and we're using only 1% of this number. 99% of global data is not stored, not analyzed, and not used. Think about what would happen. How much we managed to achieve with 1%? We created stars, we created life, we took we, everything in one, with 1%. What would happen if we would use 2% or 3%. That's it. The other side of the equation, remember this, this is going to be very important. Remember what this 1%. The other side of the equation is, of course, processing power and computing power. And since the Apollo 11 moon landing mission, processing power is up 1 trillion folds in strength. It's getting stronger and stronger all the time. It's not stopping. Actually, in your smartphone today, you have more processing power than the entire Apollo 11 moon landing mission. More than that, in your USB charger, 
there's more processing power in the USB charger than the motherboard of Apollo 11. It's not stopping, it's getting faster and faster all the time. It's also getting cheaper and cheaper all the time. And every four years, the cost per calculation goes down by 99%. So meaning that since Apollo 11, it's actually down to zero, 99.999%. Today, we are getting more data, stronger processing power for free. And this is what's making this whole change. And from here, things are gonna accelerate even faster and faster. It's not stopping. And we have to start thinking in new terms, new models, not linearly anymore. All the doctrines that we've been accustomed to are not relevant into the new world because all of that is the foundation to the number one revolution we are experiencing right now. Generative AI. This is the biggest technological revolution we've ever seen. This is going to be bigger than the smartphone. It's going to be bigger than the, than the internet. It's going, to be, it's going to about to change our life. Never ever a technology was adopted as fast. 18 months into the revolution, 1 billion people all over the world today are using generative AI every day. Most of them don't even know that they do. Never a technology was developing as fast as generative AI. The size of the model are, are growing up exponentially. If up until 2018, generative AI outpaced the Moore's law by a factor of six, since 2018, AI is developing 3,000 times faster than the Moore's law. And it's not stop, it's getting stronger, stronger. Never a technology was developing as fast as we're seeing right now. And now we have to ask ourselves, what is generative AI? And let me surprise you. Generative AI is not about ChatGTP. Generative AI is not about Copilot. Those are the smallest application of a much bigger revolution. It's like saying we invented the internet so we can have Spotify. It's like saying we invented the smartphone to have an Uber app. No, it's about to change our life in ways that we did not even think about. 2023, today if we want to develop a drug, it's gonna cost us $10 billion. It's gonna take at least 10 years, success rate of 0.01%. In 2023, AlphaFold developed a drug in 30 days for liver cancer using generative AI simulations on a computer. We are about to start producing drugs in ways that we didn't even think about up until now. 30 days, few millions of dollars using generative AI simulation. The entire healthcare market is about to change. We created, we created chemicals in 2023. DeepMind created 2.2 million new materials that never existed on our planet. 800 years of knowledge leapfrog in two months' time. Using generative AI simulation, simulating all the different molecules, all the different atoms, and created new materials. If that would happen to create 2.2 million materials, that's 800 years of, leap, of leapfrog. AI is now staying generate. And when we think about those chemicals are going to be the building blocks of the drugs that we're consuming, industries, everything is about chemicals, right? Now we have them. And we start to see the first product which are coming on the back of, of this revolution. We all want batteries, we all want electric cars. The batteries did not change for the last 70 years up until generative AI came into our life. And in January 2024, the US government partnered with Microsoft to develop the next generation of batteries. Using generative AI, Microsoft screened 32 million materials down to 18, which are gonna be the next generation of batteries in 80 hours. By the way, those 18 are already down to two. And we know two things about them. We don't know what the materials are because the government did not provide the information. What we do know is A, they are nothing similar to anything that we've seen up until now, cheaper, faster, longer range, safer, and if we would do 32 million materials in the traditional way, taking them to labs, checking them, it would take 2.1 million years to do. Microsoft did it in 80 hours. In 80 hours, we are about to change the battery market, we change the chemical market, we change the healthcare market, and now we have to start thinking about when Will generative AI will outsmart the human brain? 
So the common knowledge of us was going to happen by the end of the decade. We thought by next year, three months ago, it already happened. Well, OpenAI came with the O1 model, generative AI already outsmart the human brain. So the question about general AI and all the discussion, what's going to outsmart us, water under the bridge, it happened a few months ago. By the end of the decade, generative AI will create a situation that we can actually outsmart death. We can cheat death. Because if we can create drugs now in days, 99% cheaper, faster, we have our DNA information, we can start personalizing drugs. It's gonna cost so much cheaper, so how much, why not to make them personalize drugs? Treatment, diagnostic, faster, cheaper, easier, 99.99% .99 accuracy. Are we about to cheat death? We are definitely believe so. We here in this room, we are the generation that we live beyond 100 years old. Life expectancy is about to boom because of generative AI. If you think about it, that's already started to happen. Life expenses is already going up and now we have the tools to do that even more. Also generative AI will help us to completely reshape the energy market. We need so much more energy and it will come from a new resources, the holy grail of clean unlimited energy, nuclear fusion. So the joke with nuclear fusion for the last 30 years is 30 years away. Not anymore. The leapfrog in research we've seen in the last year, thanks to AI algorithms and development, this is happening. I already told you about the experiments in France that created a star using nuclear fusion. It's happening. And in a decade, we will have clean, unlimited energy, cheap energy. Just to give you a reference, if today we're using 110 million barrels of oil every day, every day to power a planet, if the entire plant will move to nuclear fusion, we will need 11. And we're gonna create so much more energy, but we're not gonna transmit it on our current grid because it's inefficient, it can't handle so much energy. We'll need new grid, we'll need new materials, we'll use superconductors, the most efficient element on the planet right now. And like nuclear fusion, this was a joke for decades. Not anymore. In one year, we managed to develop superconductors it's already started, the first implementation will start to see them, and in the coming years, it's gonna become standard. And superconductors is the most efficient material out there. And just to give you a benchmark, if to power a city in the size of Miami, all you need is one cable, 17 centimeters diameter of a superconductor that can contain all the energy that Miami needs. Of course, then you need to distribute it. That's a different story, but that shows you how efficient this material is. So if you think about it, generate, if we'll use it right, in the right way, we'll have more drugs, new batteries, new chemicals, food, resources, energy, generator, ger thanks to generative AI. Are we about to move from the world of scarcity into the world of abundance? Or as we call it in thematic world, moving from the world of not enough to the world of more than enough. We are big believers in the thematic universe that if we'll play our cards right using this technology, we are heading at one point into the most deflationary environment in human history. It's gonna happen at one point next, year, next decade, I don't know, 2035, 2037, at some point, we are moving to one of the most deflationary environment that will have everything if we use this technology in the right way. Just in time, that AI will not just gonna outsmart the human brain. It's not just gonna outsmart humanity. AI is about to outsmart life. Artificial super intelligence. If you think about life is much, much more smarter than humanity and why this is happening for two reasons. The first reason is because the mods are developing so fast. I just showed you how fast those mods are developing. The second reason, because this technology, AI, is about to marry and combine with another technology. The technology is about to come and change everything. The fire moment of humanity, quantum computing. 
can't un I, I can't even tell you how strong this technology is. But I'm just going to give you one food for thought and leave it there. If you in 2019, a consortium of Google, NASA, few universities, which are building quantum computing, have announced on quantum supremacy. What that means? They've announced the quantum the quantum computer made more calculations in 200 seconds than the IBM supercomputer, the fastest computer on the planet today, will make in 10,000 years, in 200 seconds. Machine that can calculate everything in zero time. And this is a machine that will allow us to use more than 1% of global data, 2%, 3%, 4%. And we're not gonna double global data every 18 months. We're actually gonna double it every 12 hours and use so much more of it thanks to those, these technologies. And I'll wrap it up, just one quote, not my quote, Sam Altman, which I'm a big believer. 2024 is gonna be the most interesting year for human his in human history. Our life are not gonna change now. We're not gonna feel the difference. We're gonna to go to our work, families, life, everything that stays is. But the things that are happening this year are about to change the world forever. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage the moderator of our next panel, Francisco Aldaya, Pan-Regional Editor-in-Chief at Bloomberg Linea and panel members, 2024 Bravo Innovative CEO of the Year, Zhao Vitor Menin, CEO of Inter and Company, Juan Pablo Mata, CEO of Grupo Mariposa, Paola Bellizia, Vice President for Latin America at Amazon Web Services, Alejandro Anderlich, Head of Government Affairs and Public Policy for Latin America at Salesforce, and Andres Cadena, Senior Partner at McKinsey and Company. Thank you. 